Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. This is about the flywheel that's in motion and it is really picking up speed. I don't know if you remember that it was used as a metaphor for the way the growth is going to increase and also get faster and faster. And I can really see it with this particular video. So meet Kiwi Blockchain Technologies. They're located in Moscow, Russia. They're one of the most experienced in distributed ledger technology. They're a key member of the Russian FinTech Association, and they are really specialized in combining distributed ledger technology with digital assets. Yes, they attended the last Ripple swell event in Singapore. I tell you, there are so many hints on this list. You can find it either on the XRP arcade site that's maintained by Leonidas, or here I'm looking at Giant Gox. He is a community member of um, the XRP uh, in Japan. And so when you hear of any deal that's being announced after swell, you just have to look back on that list and sure enough oh they were there so i think there are many announcements still to be made because there are still a lot of names on this list that we don't know exactly how they are fitting into the fold okay now the kiwi blockchain technology company they actually own this kiwi group that operates out of Cyprus. Listen to this. Kiwi is the largest online payment service provider in Russia. They boast of 42 million customers. They do 1 trillion rubles in transactions per year. That's about 10 billion US dollars. And in July 2018, they launched their crypto bank called Hash. What is interesting about Hash is that they are uh, an investment bank that provides financial solutions to the market in regards to asset management, trading, advisory. And they have a very interesting partner, that is Bitfury, who was founded in the Netherlands. They have their head or offices in Georgia. No, not the US, but in Eastern Europe. And their CEO is from Latvia. Just tells you how global this space is. So the Bitfury, they have mega mining farms and they are one of the world's largest providers of Bitcoin mining infrastructure. So I'm just telling you that you are really in serious knee deep crypto space when you are looking at this company. So today, SBI Holdings from Japan a significant investor in Ripple, of course, two times. And the CEO, Mr. Kitao, is on the board of Ripple. He made an investment in Kiwi, and the deal was signed with the SBI Singapore Venture Group. Truly, no borders in this space. So when we take a look at the platform that he invested in, the flywheel is in motion because this solutions provider is now able to turn on banks with an open API and they can go live in less than a month. So this is so important when you are looking at the um, integration of these different fintech solutions that the company offers. They really believe in this open API and they want to help create a new architecture for banks with the implementation of a digital strategy. So do you think RippleNet will be one of their solutions? That's a silly question because don't forget, SBI is the sales engine for Ripple. That is clearly outlined in the SBI Ripple Asia agreement that they came to. He has the territory that gives him the ability to make it happen. And you know what? Mr. Kitao just didn't stop with Russia. No. Today, this 
flywheel is moving. The SBI LY Our Bank in Cambodia announced that they have acquired their commercial banking license. And they got that from the Central Bank of Cambodia. This upgrades them from a local microfinance company to a full-fledged commercial bank. And SBI has a 70% share. Now, I am positive that this is going to follow suit, just as in the two banks that he took a share in in South Korea and also in Vietnam. And now, look, TP Bank in Vietnam runs on Ripple. I'm just sure you're going to see an announcement coming soon that Cambodia SBI LY Hour runs on Ripple. And Mr. Kitao is getting his flywheel moving. and no doubt he is going to get those corridors liquid so that he can run ODL among them all. Okay, everybody, I'm jumping to some fluff. Well, yesterday we learned that in Japan, the government here is going to send two reusable masks to 50 million households to help fight the virus. I really want to see this done because having disposable masks is well just not so easy right now because when you do throw it away you have to remember that the replacement is almost impossible they're just sold out and the supply chains have been um, so badly affected that you just can't find them in japan so uh, people are feeling uh, very nervous about running out. So I'm really happy to see that they are going to send a solution of a reusable one that is washable. And I was just also kind of thinking what's going on with the torch because the relay was suspended once the postponement of the Olympic Games was announced. And I wanted to know where that flame was because they had taken such great care in bringing that flame all the way from Greece. Well, it's still burning. It's on display a little bit north of Tokyo in Fukushima. It'll stay there through the whole month of April. And I'm happy to see that. It'll probably go on different locations for display throughout the year until the actual dates have been determined for the restart. And in keeping with the flame, I think if you visit any temples here in Japan, you're going to see that the flame had an integral part of the awe, so awe-inspiring glow that occurs inside the temples that are so often adorned with gold. The, the, the reflection is just absolutely beautiful. And so when you think about all the different ways that a flame was used in Japan to lighten the night time, this is one that you just might find hanging on the eve of a temple. It's a temple lantern. They're so beautiful. And yes, you know, sometimes they do come available in the auction sites for uh, not too expensive, actually, but they, I think they are just lovely in design. And another one that was used during the Edo period to light up the interiors is this style here that had a lacquered wood base with a rice paper screen. The glow was just so warm. And here is a style that was used to cast a brighter light using the grapeseed oil usually. Uh, that would just throw out the light bright enough to read by. And if you are a history buff, look up Yoshiwara. This is a image that depicts that part of Tokyo during Edo period. It's very interesting. You can see that people are carrying their lanterns or what are called in Japan, chochin. And these were very functional and they would have a flame on the inside and would light up the way at night. But this guy I want to tell you about was an inventor of a type of light that's very unique. His name is Kunitomo. And 
Kuni Tomo-san was an inventor, really known for being a gunsmith, a, a trade and craft which he learned from the Dutch. He also was the first to make the reflective telescope in Japan, but this this lamp that he invented, this decorative lamp, is something. It's called a Nezumi Tanke, and it self-supplied the oil by a very unique air pressure design. And you can see here that when this oil became low, the Nezumi, or mouse, would then drip more oil from its mouth. And this is what it looks like. You can see this one is made of brass, ceramic, and wood. And I don't know if you've ever seen anything like it before, but I think it's very unique. And to leave you with one that I thought was most beautiful, I chose this one, which has a ceramic um, looks like it's all in ceramic with this bamboo stock pedestal i just think it's just so fun because they're so different all right everybody do keep your flame burning and take care sayonara for now bye bye